That's a Lou Mata. Y'all got to excuse me. I got a really bad cold. I want him to talk about his African mission amongst us when we have time. Um, but he's been trying to talk to me about it for a while now. I got, man, I get emails from sometime. I think they are you. They African pastors. I don't even know their name, but they know mine. I said, I got some strange African connection here. That, you know, my people are calling me home. I got an email the other day. It said, Pastor Dukes, I'm talking in his voice, from Zimbabwe. It is nice to read your website and know that you preach the word of God. I am so happy to know that you are willing to come over here to Africa. I'm like, if you pay. <laughs> Same. You pay. Because they always hit me. You got to pay for me to fly over there. America, I'm, okay, if you pay. <laughs> and, and I thought it was him. But it wasn't. I said, man, I, I must be famous in Africa, man. Look. <laughs> but I wanted to have an opportunity once I sit down and talk with him, to talk to you guys. I think it's a great land. Uh, all lands are great for ministry. All lands are poor. It's because we feel we live in the land of the rich where people want to flock over here because they have freedom to get on uh, 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 underneath from time. And the, the, uh, the, the, the brutal communists and, and they run to America. But what you're missing is your freedom. Maybe y'all get it in, how you say it, Ms. Day? If you don't get it in the wash, you get it in the rinse. You miss your freedom. See, America is not free. Maybe y'all get it later. You'll get it later. I don't want to get all p political. But, but spiritually, spiritually, most of us are in bondage here. And, and, and you know, every, every person I talk to from different countries, I say, why do you come here? What's so attractive? Education. They all say the same thing. Education and money. Really? That's all? But then you find out you're not free. You're in bondage. The bondage, real bondage, is not being under a leader that you don't like. We, well, in that case, we're all in bondage. There's probably none of y'all here don't like Trump. But we feel that they don't control us like the other countries, but they do. I'm interested in helping uh, ministry in other countries because I believe true freedom is not the liberty to do as thou will. I believe true freedom, freedom is knowing Jesus Christ Amen. as your Lord and Savior. And being free to exercise that authority. Freedom is not in the ability to go to the store and buy as thou will. It's bondage. True freedom is here. It's there. And the two collide and become one. Maybe you don't know my story, but I spent some time in prison. And I believe is that's where I found true freedom and confinement. See, some of you think you're free. This ain't the land of the free. But everybody grab it because it's money to be made here. But this is not the land of the free, beloved. People come over here and get in more bondage. They become more hateful. Never forget, Charity, years ago I sat in the car, me and this man of God with your father. You remember that day? Young, woman, young man from West Africa. And we both looked at him and said, why did you come over here? I said, Mr. Johnson said, well, just let me ask you this. Do you like it? <laughs> My head swung. Do you? Because we was wondering to ourselves, 
we see TV and, you know, people display other countries as bad. You see poor and poverty in Africa. And the minute you see an African, the first thing you think about is poverty, little children running in the village, you know, no food, no water. But, but guess who keeping most of them like that? Us. But why? Because we get money, we send it over there. This is what I'm not, I'm not going to do. We get money, we send it over there, right? But we don't teach them how to go fish for themselves. Why? Because we are a country that like to keep people in bondage. It, it sounds nice. Feed the children. Oh, I done something good today. But they didn't tell you what they do in the background in the accounting room. They feeding themselves. If I can keep you in bondage needing me by not teaching you how to fish, I got you in bondage. You will always need me. See, my children think they, they wanted to leave the house early because they was tired of us. No, beloved, that wasn't why. You was really ready to leave so early because we taught them how to be independent. I did. I did it intentionally. When they was babies, at five, you know what I taught them? I taught them how to run a business. I made my son CEO. And I sat him down, I said, you the CEO? He said, what is that? I said, you the leader. Then my little daughter slobbing, she okay, was like, what mama going to be? <laughs> said, you are going to be the second leader. Malia wasn't really here yet. <laughs> See, they thought they was tired. It wasn't that. You was just so independent that you was craving to do what you was taught. So I wasn't worried when they left. They know how to survive. If your child is in bondage because they don't know how to survive, you're just a pure American. You're just a pure American. You're Americanized. Don't collect money to feed people if you're not going to teach them how to eat on their own. One of the greatest, one of the greatest robberies America has ever done. But we got the resources and the money to send people over and create agriculture in those areas that we call poor. Instead of sending them a box of rice, that will last them a few months, collect another half a million. Well, where that half a million, where that million dollars going? You think that those few little areas take a million dollars worth of rice? No. Just some rice and some powder in a bag. And, and that lasts a few months for a few people in the village or whatever. Really? Y'all believe that, don't you? No, take the money, break the follow ground up, plant. Build wells. Y'all know, know what happened to most death? I mean, you know the rapper, ex most death. He went, you know I went over there. Y'all remember uh, 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 the, the comedian, um, uh, what's his name? That went, went to Africa and, and disappeared? Dave Chappelle, y'all remember Dave Chappelle? Y'all know why? Y'all don't know the stories, do you? Yeah. You know why these people ain't really famous like that no more, right? Because they spoke against it. And they saw the real stuff and tried to do the real deal, and nobody didn't like them no more. So they put out there that they was Illuminati, they was this, they was that. No, that, that wasn't the real story. They went and tried to change what we never changed. Kill the threats. Look, people, I said this. Now I'm going to have to let you go. I can't even preach now. But I said this because it was really on my heart. I talked to him earlier. I want to tell you about the African project. I thought to myself immediately because I meet so many uh, natives of, of the Af African uh, community in different places. As a matter of fact, the second year I was here, 
uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> one of my co-workers was a prince in Africa, in Egypt. Had no idea this young man was wealthy. He didn't act like it, but he used to shake his head at me. He said, I just don't understand. He said, you, you Americans treat chicken so abusively. <laughs> yeah, chicken. But, but let me explain. Like, <laughs> I'm laughing. But he was serious. Why was he serious? Because he saw the bondage in me. He said, wow. All I kept saying around him, man, I need this. I need that. I need this. I was like, I had good shoes on. I was like, man, I wish I could give me some new shoes at work. Talk American. So he came and he bought me some Ken of Coles, top of the line. He said, here. I'm like, wow, man. <laughs> I mean, what you trying to get out of me? You know, bought me some brand new shoes, man. But he was making a point. I didn't get it. I said, so what do you mean about this chicken? He said, we grow our own chickens. I said, here in America, at our house. <laughs> this couldn't be real. I'm telling my wife, this is crazy. I said, and then what? We snapped their necks. I'm like, you the abusive chicken person. <laughs> but what he was telling me was, same thing I just told you. Teach me how. Don't keep telling me or supporting me. You're crippling me. It was like it's in Zimbabwe. It was right around Christmas. He put out his wallet. And he said, I'm just assuming you do not believe that I'm a prince in Africa. And my father wants me to take over his throne. I'm like, this is coming to America. <laughs> I felt like I was in the movie. <laughs> I'm like, what's going to happen next? I'm going to get a Jerry Carroll. But he was serious. So he pulled out his wallet. And he showed me a picture of his mother and his father arrayed in all kinds of jewels. And, 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 and I was just amazed. I was like, this stuff is real. And he was looking at me like, you, you, you are so caught up with the bondage of your society. But I'm thinking to myself, why would you come here? Why are you even working? I said, why you work? He said, I have nothing else to do. I was taught to consume my time. Thinking to myself, me? I had it, I'd be at home sleep. <laughs> right around Christmas, I said, Brother Ahmad, you want to come over for, for Christmas dinner? He said, yes. Came over. Uh, no, prior to that, I invited him over for, for dinner. He met my family. We talked. We hung out, became friends. He eventually left the job. Still talked. Invited him over for Christmas dinner. During that time, me and co-pastor wasn't really sta financially stable. Looked under the tree, saw no gifts. He said, in your culture, you're supposed to have presents under the tree, right? I said, well, I don't have money for them. Right before Christmas, during that time, the brother flooded my house with so many gifts. I mean, for everybody. And I said, wow, man, what made you do this? Once again, it's in your culture. I said, you, what, what you going to do? I don't do that. Thinking to myself, he was taught how to fish. So he didn't have his hand out. But he was showing me. All y'all do is survive off of more. But the true freedom is knowing that you have Christ. Yeezys, ye who? Ye shall follow in the footsteps of thy Lord. The next hottest shirt. 
we feel so fascinated when we drive cars with names on them that attract other people. I want to teach, if I sin, if I go to, if God opened the door for me to go anywhere in a country where there's remotely uh, uh, poverty beyond my imagination or beyond what I have seen, even after where there's churches that need to be uh, built up, if I ever have the opportunity to go, the first thing I'm not going to do is raise an offering. First thing I'm going to do is raise awareness. Before you leave uh, this afternoon, man of God, and I say this with all sincerity. He's building a church in Africa. And from my understanding, y'all like to buy your land. They like to buy the materials. Years ago, uh, your friend uh, from Africa, young lady, I forget her name, Pastor Irene, was building a church. And she told me the process. She said, we like to purchase our land and purchase our materials. I said, oh, okay, so uh, the bank, no, no banks. They didn't do the bank. That way, they don't have to worry about the bondage. We're used to bondage. We're just used to it, people. If I ask you, how many of you got credit cards in this room? How many going to raise your hand? How many of you got credit cards, right? More, one, going twice, two, three, four. How many of you got five, six, going twice, seven, you're over the limits, eight, nine, ten, you're over the limits, going back. Right? Right? Know why? Because we just used the bondage. So he's building this church. Right, man of God? He's building a church. Right? He's building his church. He's a pastor. I understand why he wants to do what he's doing. But let me say this. If I help at any capacity, and you help, I want to know one thing. Is he teaching his people how to fish? How many of you know how to fish for men? For years I have talked, but we're going to get more in detail. That's all I want to know from him. Because he ain't trying to get in debt, which is great. When we got this building, the man said to me, you have your own building. He's from France. I'm like, but I still pay you. You, you see our, our minds are strict. He said, you have your own. Thinking to myself, don't that say we owe X, Y, and Z? So he, he thought I was supposed to be happy. Like, we got our own building. Yes, we got the keys to it. But guess what, people? Listen, and I'll say this with all sincerity. If you don't start giving your tithe, we're going to have to get a key back. <laughs> Can I be honest with you? I like the method. Raise the money. Get your own. You say our building? We're just high class renters. They change the name from rent to mortgage or lease to own and make you pay them. And they put their name on the title who it belongs to. The title holder. When you finish paying for what they said is yours. 
I mean, no, the car you drive, you still pay a monthly bill. It ain't your car. <laughs> Driving up talking about doom, 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 doom. Oh, how much you owe? 38000 It ain't yours. Because when you miss one faithful payment, guess who's going to be coming to knock on your door? The people that own the car. Are, are y'all, does this, this make any kind of sense at all, man? Teach me how to fish. Teach me how to plant. But we're so used to bondage, co-pastor. When you say FPU, Financial Peace University, only three people show up. Some of you even paid for it and didn't even show up. I am so lost because we, we're teaching you how to eat. But, stay, but instead, you want to rent food. I lost a sincere member because I asked him, why would you rent a couch? <laughs> they got mad at me. Well, I'm not sitting on no floor. Would you sit on the floor, Pastor Dukes? Oh, I lost them, but guess what? I hope they gained some wisdom because I said, yes, I would sit on the floor, and yes, I have sat on the floor. <laughs> right? I own everything inside of my house, at least. If I don't own the temple, I own the furniture. <laughs> y'all, y'all with me? Absolutely, I sow into your endeavors, as long as I know that he's teaching them what he's doing. Be teaching them how to build with no debt, how to survive with no debt. Why wouldn't you sow into that? I'm quite sure somewhere over there you probably could have got a loan from a loan shark. It's a lot of them over there in Africa. It's a lot of some loan sharks, some good ones. They'll, they'll, get, they'll loan you undercover here, man of God. <laughs> but when we come back two years now, and what? You better have my money. Oh, I, it's a few of them I know. They will loan you. But I like the fact that he wants to do this with no debt. We can't do it because we are so Americanized in our thinking that Trump said something so important. He said, I wanna, I'm going to get America. Guess who he was talking about? Us. The ones they talked. Right? He, he, let me say it how I, I want to say it. He said, I'm going to get all of America's children who we taught how to be in debt, out of debt. Trillion dollars worth of debt. You only do what your father does. You only act out of the bloodline in which your father gave you or you come from. The fathers of our country have gotten us in trillions of dollars of debt. We follow suit because that's how we're taught. I told, I told a young lady here just recently. I, I don't know. They just don't li they, they listen, but they don't, they don't listen. They listen. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they, they don't do. You, you get what I'm saying? I hope she listened to me. I'm in the educational area. Can, I'm just talking to you just normal, like normal people. Is that a, I've been in the education uh, 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 arena for, for years. Now I'm back there. When I say that, this doing all the stuff in the background that most of you do in the front ground when you want to go to, to universities and colleges, right? Now, now I know all this stuff, but I'm still kind of crazy enough to go to school. But I know what they do in the background. But, but, I, but I, I'm a life learner. I'm going to constantly go to school. Hold on. Hopefully we get a president. Y'all remember Hillary? I'm going to waive tuition fees. I'm like, vote for her. Let the woman rule over the man at this point. Y'all remember she said that, right? I'm going to waive tuition fees. We was happy, wasn't we? We was like, yes, get Hillary in office. 
All the people who went to school. How many of you got school debt, right? Right? It's a debt you're going to have forever. You can't erase it. You can't bankrupt it. You can't do nothing. Let me explain. Why is school debt one of the only debts you can't bankrupt? Y'all going to miss me. School debt is one of the only debts you can't put in the bankruptcy. That if you die, you got something connected to you financially. They're going to come and get their debt first. School debt is one of the only debts that will mess your life completely up. But none of you ask why. Oh, this is going to get churchy now. When I started off in the, in the uh, educational industry, I worked at University of Phoenix. University of Phoenix was under the tiny, tiny, uh, uh, the, 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 the brutal tinery of their leader, which was the founder. I forget his name, but he's a short guy, and he loved white hair, and he loved cloning stuff. Yeah. So in other words, he was an atheistic, scientific, Gnostic. Right. So at the time, they were under such scrutiny for what they were doing. What they were doing. They was taking credits, and they was double charging people for credits. We was taught to get on the phone and lie to them, hide the credits, make sure that we can put it in there somehow, recharge them, send them to academics, which is academics, do the financial awarding, the AYs, which is academic gear, uh, and, and, and send them to financial aid, which is another department. Financial aid, talk to them very smoothly, make them feel like they have gotten over, but really they took the money and put it on the back of the loan. At the end of their loans, some of them almost owed double of what their education was. So people start suing them. People start boycotting them. All in front of UOP. There was a sign. You remember? You worked there, didn't you? Signs. They was all in the front walking down the street. Some of them had signs out, atheist owner, why would you work for him? All It was just crazy. So I started investigating. I said, I said Mr. Dukes, um, you know you get free education. I said, it's the only way I'm going to go here. So I set out a plan. I said, well, your wife get 80% off. That's almost free. And your children, if they're going to school, X, Y, I said, he's great. So I started setting up a little plan for my family. I'm going to go to school. And, and I started seeing the weirdest things, like our owner cloning his dogs and, uh, you know, doing this weird stuff and people on the phone lying to people. Just lying, very unethical. Uh, lying to people to get them in school. Refuse to tell them that you're going to owe this X amount of dollar when you finish. They was just lying to him. And I'm sitting there listening. So years now here, fast forward, now what I do is not the enrollment part. It's something more tedious that opened my eyes. I'm the person that sits in the back with all of your numbers that you put in there and all your information and analyze it. F SA, financial student aid, analyzer, uh, analytic, and say, you know what? This person ain't going to never get out of debt. This one right here going to be stuck for the rest of their life. This one is failing, but yet they owe $40,000. This one right here, there's no way. The interest is too high. This one right here ain't even. So we send it back. Every time we send it back, guess what happens? They don't tell you they add a fee on Every time they have to analyze it, send it back. You don't know it, do you? Because we just want the certificate. But let me tell you why you never, it'll never leave. Don't you know that America makes literally all of their income, mainly all of their income, to support our nation off of education. But yet, we have one of the poorest education systems ever. I don't get that. Something is really backwards, isn't it? So when we have other people come over from other countries, I appreciate when they come and go to school, right? May get some kind of discount. 
But this is what I told the young lady and I'm telling other ones. Won't you go abroad so you don't have no debt? Well, guess what? You know how we think? We think like Americans. You don't have a baby. Some of you young people, you're safe. You don't have children yet. You're not married yet. Get up off of your self. Move. Do something before you get a baby. Before you get married. Before you get in bondage. Then you're going to be stuck with some little boy and some little girl trying to figure your life out. You're just doing what every other American is doing, getting yourself deeper in debt. I found out that most of them that work in the nail shops that you're in bondage to, hey, ain't no wrong getting your nails done, but some of you got, you just have to do it. They depend on you. But guess what? I found out, glory to God, file your stuff, girl. <laughs> Go get you a buffer and a file look, three dollars instead of thirty. Look at me. But 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 guess what they do? Some of these people, seriously, can y'all talk back to me? Some of these people don't even know each other. They meet each other uh coming over here and get into business. One of them told me that. I don't know yet. We I said they said we're not family. Oh. No, we just came over, we start business together. Huh? And I'm thinking like an African American. You trusted them? <laughs> Ain't that how we do? You, you trusted them and stuff? I want out. I want out. If you mess me over because I trust you, that's your business. I want out, baby. I want out completely. Now that I'm in school, I tell all the students this. Stay there until you die. <laughs> this, take one class a year. Just stay there. So you never have to pay the loan. I know this is bad. To, I'm giving bad advice. I hope, hope my boss didn't know, hear me. <laughs> like this man is causing for us to lose money. But I know a person that does it. Stay there. One of my one of my professors was doing it. You teaching, but you got all these degrees. I'm like, how far can you go? You ask and get a double doctrine if you want. <laughs> 80 years old. What are you doing? I still go to college. <laughs> and people ask me, when are you gonna finish? I finished 18 times. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, <laughs> look, Miss J, since look, since we in it now, we might well just stay in school. <laughs> just take one class a semester. <laughs> and then look, when you die, tell him he's gone now. <laughs> what you have to do at that point, you have to call Great Lakes, so your loan provider, and you have to do a debt forbearance. Okay, if you don't do that, they do not forbear the loan. They search for any valuable income that you had left, houses, cars. You don't fill out that death forbearance and give them a death certificate of your loved one. They will come after your stuff. So, yeah, be like, who's going to die first? Because if you die first, make sure that you uh, take care of my death forbearance so we don't have to pay. Yeah, yeah, figure that out before you die. Can I ask you one more question? Uh, and, and, and serious, this off, this, off the, this off the chain church today. How many of you, seriously, by amen, have life insurance? Okay, I'm talking to the adults because your, 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 your children probably don't know, but young adults, you're on your own now. Young adults back there that live by yourself, uh, you probably think you're going to live 80 years or so. Not necessarily, right? Um, 
If you don't have life insurance and you're uh, creeping in the age of 21, you're 20, and you're pretty much on your own, uh, don't do what most of us did. Wait until you get sick. Wait until you, you get over uh, 25. Everything goes up after 25. Not extremely, but it goes up. Or wait till you get 35, close to 40, and now you want life insurance. Or you're dead and trying to get life insurance. <laughs> I know it's funny. I don't know if y'all know me and Copass are, are, are insurance agents too. Yeah, I mean, she's the agent. I'm her worker. <laughs> Just say it. Go past him. Y'all don't know. She, she licensed in lots of stuff. She's smart. She went and got it, and I worked under her license. So she was sending me out to do dirty work. <laughs> and I <t> No. <laughs> oh. Some of the people I was, we had to go in, it was dirty work. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying it. <laughs> You become a psychologist, a therapist, a preacher. You, you become everything under the sun just trying to get them to realize you need life insurance. Let me ask you another question. How many had uh, members of your family to pass with no life insurance? Amen? Okay. Um, man of God. Okay. Get, get at uh, Sister Bernice real quick. Sister Bernice, if we can ask you, how much did it cost to bury them. Um, I think we wind up, it was my father, and we didn't know. He died of a lung cancer, and we was there with him for over two years, you know, going back and forth with him to the hospital, not knowing he didn't have any life insurance. And we found out basically on his deathbed, he told us. And I think it cost us, we, got, we was able to do it for about 4500 4, but we had to get all the children, all the brothers, all the relatives to contribute to get it done. But the good thing about it, he did have a, he had paid for his plot, right. for burial, so that was a blessing. So, so stay right there. Mm -hmm. Now, I want y'all to hear this. Most of us in, in America, I mean, most of us in church stay away from cremations because you have this weird idea that God is not going to save you and, and your body's burnt up and now you're going to hell and all this kind of stuff. Whatever your weird thought is about that, that's your thoughts and your prerogative. I'm not in, in, in intervening. However, the plot, the burial plot, that thing and the space that they have to bury, don't you know you have to pay for a death space? And then you got to pay for the tombstone, that little thing that you go to and remember your loved ones? Don't you know how much that costs? So y'all pay for the casting, right? We, pay, we had to pay for the casket and the funeral. And then he, although he had his plot already paid for, we had to still pay $1,000 for them to open it. Exactly. What? what year was that? About 10 years ago, maybe. Okay. Uh, that's probably what? Tripled by now? So guess how much it is now? Well, about four times that. Three times that. Yes. Just that piece he's talking about, this 12,000 by itself. 12,000 by itself. Uh, shoot that right quick. Uh, Elder Parker, you, 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 you smart. You got a smart wife too, right? Right. Elder Parker and mother, tell them what you do. How prepared are you to die? It won't cost my family a dime. Yes. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. You know, because we had to start saving now. That's right. So what do you do? What are you paying for? Tell us what are you doing? Uh, everything is paid for. Glory man. to God. The burial, even the cards and uh, the flowers. Uh, Everything, it won't, it won't be a burden on my family because I have had to support bury all of my siblings, my not my siblings, my brothers, my brothers except for my oldest brother and my dad, my auntie, nephews and nieces. And not only that, I had to preach their funeral. Uh, you know, this and, double work, huh? 
triple work. Jesus. You know, and it sort of drained all of my emergency funds. However, I learned from that, and we got insurance. And thank God that we have a good insurance that now we are we'll cover. You know, wow. so when Mother and I leave this world, make our transition, it won't be a financial burden on our family. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus. I want out. Some of you are so, and I don't say this rudely, I say this correctively, are so undisciplined in your finances, you can't even survive to pay life insurance. It's so uncaring, it's so unloving that you'll be willing to leave your family with ten to fifteen to twenty thousand dollars worth of debt because you figured you're gonna live another ten years. That is wrong. Not only do I want to leave and get buried, I want to leave my children with enough money to start their own business. Come on, black man, you got it. You 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 listening? Listen, we got to get out. I don't know where this emergency came from, but we have to get out. You young people, we don't teach you how to fish. Your parents is not teaching you how to fish. See, I know we did something right, Michaela, because Michaela going to hold on to a dollar for a year. <laughs> Michaela ain't fooled me one bit. We used to give her money. She was very disciplined. She would not go spend it all in one place. Okay, you got some money? Mm -mm. I ain't spending mine, but if you want to buy me something to eat, I'll let you buy me something to eat. I like that. You learned that. Keep that. Not only is it not about not being broke. It's about how are you allocating your funds. Stop this Christian mentality that the world is going to end, so you might as well just go out and spend. Don't, don't stop that. The world may not end for another thousand years. Right? I told myself. Me and my wife, she hear me cry all the time. Not little, but I'm in her face. She's in my face. Pastoring don't come with retirement plans unless you're hired in through an organization. Like the, the uh, 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 Catholic churches, big Roman, they give you a nice pension. Mine didn't come with a pension because I'm a founding pastor. We have to create one. Let me ask you one more question. Young people, y'all ready? If your parents is not teaching you, they're not bad parents. They just don't know themselves. So what you're going to grow up doing is doing what they do. Nothing financial. You're going to hoard what you have, eat and fill your own belly, and not survive for the future. How many know God was a what? Planner. Y'all thought, oh, you thought he just got up in the heavens and said, let there be light. Let the be He planned people. And because God planned the universe, those that he put in the universe, he wants them to plan on how to take care of the universe. We can't live from paycheck to paycheck, from day to day and year to year without planning. If you work at McDonald's, you work at any fast food restaurant and you live at home with your parents and you're under the age of 21, life insurance for you for about a $25,000 policy is going to be less than $10 out of your paycheck. But some of you are not disciplined as young people. You want to spend it on stupid stuff. Make it come out your check. Talk to the agent. Let us lead you in the right direction. Hopefully, we can get your parents. But you young people, 
you have the opportunity to start off right. We will start to push education because it is the breeding ground of our country. So the first thing we do is tell them to go to school. Yes. We did very much put education in my house because I told my son like this. I said, son, I don't want you to go to school because I think it's going to get you a good job. I said, I want to wash that mentality out. I want you to go to school because learning is essential and fundamental to the brain, the development of the brain, and it teaches you the truth in some areas about how to navigate. He responded. He said, I'm glad you said that because Bill Gates, all these other people, they have to go to school to make money. They just learn how to do it. I said, absolutely, I concur. So he told me, he said, I'm going to go find a good job. And then I'm going to come to you. And you tell me what to do. I said, okay. Say where you want to work. Let's pray. We prayed. He put an application. And for Apple, he came to his mom and said he want to work at Verizon. His mom said, well, I got a job at Verizon, but I didn't want to work. They prayed. The Lord opened the door for him, right? Came to me with his 401k plan packet. I sat down with him and I sold him. I said, if you start this right now, at 19, I done the math. I said, if you do this right now, son, don't worry about it. I said, this get tied and God going to pour it to you. Don't listen to that boy make more money than most of us adults in this room. I said, this give. And God is going to open doors for you financially. This give. And you, ain't, you, don't, you don't have the degree. Just continue to give and continue to sow and to continue to show that you're responsible over the things of God and he opened doors for you. But I said, God wants you to plan for your life. So we sat down. I sold them, long story short, I sold them the 401k plan. I sold them how to diversify the funds. And I sold him that what most companies don't show you is that you're really in control of your plan. That you can go in there and not your broker in control. If they control it, they make money off of you. He said, oh, I can do that? I said, if you start right now, by the time you are 40 years old, son, listen to me. You can walk out of a job with 900 and $98,000 in your pocket. Father, we pray over our congregation, your people that you have given us to rule over faithfully, honestly. Father, I ask you, to forgive me for not exegeting your scripture in such a way today. However, I believe by the unction of my emotion, by the pushing, the minds of your people being revealed to me, this was most needed to be said. And Father, I pray for the man of God when he goes back to Africa that even what was said here today will permeate this soul, that he teaches people how to fish. And they grab their spiritual rods and they go out and become fishers of men. That he teaches them how to survive and come from under tyrant rulers who want to suck the life out of us financially. The bondage from driving from living, from learning, in most cases with people just to eat. We want out, Father. This is our plea. I plea. It starts with me. We do not want to be ruled by this master. Give us wisdom. Teach us how to trust you, Lord. So we don't have to depend 
on credit cards. Teach us, Lord. And if we can't do it, teach us how to be temperate with self-control and say we just can't do it. Teach us how to be a base. When we're down, we know we still got you. So we don't have to run and dig ourselves deeper in cahoots with this master. In Christ, we stand in this authority. We pray in the spirit of God. Let the church say amen. I appreciate you so much for listening to me. Without exegesis scripture, we're just talking to you. The co pastor, uh, before we leave, are we going to have the FPU again? Okay. So this year is this January. Normally we have it in January, right? So we're going to work on it. We have other projects going on, but we're going to work on it. And we hope that you respond this time, people. It's a lot of work involved in getting these classes together, trying to get you involved. But I'm starting to realize the reason why people can't give and support this church because they literally just don't have it. But we can get you in that class. Talk to co-pastor and just listen to the announcements. I believe we can clear up some of this debt. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.